in the Android side, it's got, you know, a, a, a launcher, it's got a way to browse applications, it's got a way to work with users, which I'll cover in a second, you know, car kinds of things like camera and uh, uh, um, dealing with uh, sort of car specific stuff. So again, this is could be a, it's an Android app. This is one of the powerful things for the Volvo team is they, they write an APK, yeah. they deploy it, and they have a new HVAC app. Mm. So for example, you know that in Android there are public APIs that you consume as a developer and there's system APIs that are used to manage the device itself. So if I do this, what that is doing is calling a system API that is now standard in Android for communicating with vehicle hardware. Okay, so if I'm in this car, the car next to me, any car running Android P, um, then this is really consistent which means I should be able to use an app like the Assistant to communicate with any car to do some basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Set passenger temperature to 24 degrees. Okay, setting the passenger so I set that, to and that's because degrees. there's a new vehicle API in Android at the system level. And, and of course, it's the same thing's happening here, right? Turn on the rear, right? That's all system APIs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if I then switch to sort of more typical apps, Google Maps has been adapted to work inside this environment. And if you build apps for phones, for example, everything kind of looks like that, right? Yeah. In cars, it's like that, it's like that. But there's a huge variety in hardware, so we got to spend a lot of time making sure that it's not just safe for driving, but it fits in the hardware. And the second thing is actually um, using some Android APIs in this, this one's called the Cluster API, you can also have one app generating two screens worth of data um, and different, right? So if I go to navigate, you'll see that this changes. Um, and then this one will also react. So now I've got the different view. So if you decide you want to change the music as the passenger and you start navigating around and you put on some music, this stays in front of me as the driver. So there's a lot of flexibility there. So Google Maps has been uh, uh, changed to, to use that API. Mm -hmm. now, what kind of app uh, mm -hmm. are embedded? Are there uh, Android Auto apps? Or yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So if I, actually, if I go back here and show um, uh, the apps here are media apps. So basically, any media app that works with Android Auto um, should work here. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so basically, and a tablet or smartphone apps should work. Um, the well, it's the same. It's the same app, right? So if uh, uh, if Pocket Cast write an app, uh, it should run on um, a car. It should run on a phone. It should run on a tablet. To make it uh, display correctly in a car, they implement two APIs. One of them is called Media Browse. And media browse is the thing that lets you like br browse the, the the media library. So in here, I, I can do this in a Volvo screen because Pocket Cast implement that API. And then once I go into a specific track, um, oh, did I tap that? If, yeah, if I go into a specific track um, here, I should be able to go and look at the. Uh, and this is populated by what they call a, uh, a media session. And this is specific actions for Pocket Cast that I can do on a track. Whereas if I go to Spotify, for example, and launch, right? Same API implemented by Pocket Cast, but they have their different actions they want to perform. So, so for an application developer, it truly is like write the app once, implement the APIs, now it should work on a Wear OS, Android Automotive, on a phone, write the whole thing. Um, and that kind of goes to the other part of the story I was saying is like, how do you get more apps on here? Well, now we've got the Play Store. And this is an early example. I mean, we're working on this with our car partners, right? But you can see how it's... Uh, Definitely, I mean, visually, it works in a car. It's got bigger fonts. It's got simpler controls, right? Like this kind of thing. Also, the app content is limited to, right now, messaging and sort of media kind of apps. So there's a search here, and you can sort of see uh, last year when we were showing this, you're saying, what's different? There were about 400 apps that were in here. Now there are thousands. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Last year, the Google Play was, wasn't this? Nope, no, there, wasn't, there was no Google Play Store, right? So... 
of course, the big difference now is for app developers is that there, there, there'll be a way to actually get your app into a car. And for users, the car that they buy isn't static. It can grow with them, right? So if I'm listening to one kind of app now, but I want to go to a different one, I can uh, go and install it, right? I could install iHeartRadio even if it didn't come with my car, which is a... Uh, which is what the car companies actually are pretty excited about, is mm -hmm. they can participate in this really huge ecosystem. Um, and then the final thing I want to show you is uh, a car is obviously a shared device. You don't usually hand a phone to someone and say, there you go, use my phone for your stuff. But in a car, you definitely do. Um, so if I'm sign uh, kind of using, I'm Stan here, but I, uh, Emma gets in the car, I may adjust my seat, Mm, okay. So this is the kind of thing that cars do today, mm -hmm. but what they don't always do is now switch applications associated with my my pocket cast, excuse mm -hmm. me, the Spotify account, connect it to my phone, log into my Google app, look at my calendar. So I think the future we want to get to, and I think it's really close. I mean, we're doing it today, uh, but maybe even bringing in my key fob my smart key or my mm -hmm. phone yeah when i come into the car it just populates my information and makes it mine mm -hmm. and the important part is when i leave the car the same thing would happen it would go with me right about leaving my information in a car because if you're doing a shared car environment you don't I, want to even on the uh, cl closer uh, the, the name of the uh, on the left oh on the on the uh, on this one yeah i mean we're we're working on this this is a preview but um but because it won't it won't be uh, the same thing on the Correct. Yeah, this should. I mean, in the in the maps case. Uh, uh, yeah, in the maps it should. Uh, yeah, exactly. It should. Right. So this, for example, is Sten's information. But when I switch, Emma mm -hmm. shouldn't see Sten's information. Yeah. Right. right? That's a, that's a really key uh -huh. basic requirement in Android. So of course the uh, when I switch users, the the disk is encrypted. I mean, all the safety uh, and privacy uh, settings apply here. So. Yeah, um, but that's what I wanted to show you. So it's basically, yeah. Uh, one more question mm -hmm. about the apps. Uh, yes. That means that...